So I've claimed that this neat formula up here, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, box it in a really messy box to emphasize its importance. That this formula is the formula used to describe the slope at a single point. That coveted, that coveted value throughout all of our videos, that slope at one point that, that seems so interesting but elusive. You know, we want to know how fast we're moving right now, but how can we possibly measure that? And what does this slope, what does this formula really mean about slope? We're essentially taking a secant line here. We're taking the slope between this point here and this point here, and then we're seeing what happens, essentially, as those points get closer and closer together. But that may seem like a kind of odd and obscure concept to some. And how does it really relate directly to how we think of slopes and rates? And for this, I'm going to first explain it in what I think was is perhaps one of the most intuitive ways that um, the ori one of the original um, inventors, though inventor is a weird word for that, of calculus used to explain it. Um, but while it's a hundred, it's not a hundred percent correct. That's the main issue with it. Um, but it will get you really far in calculus, not only in understanding calculus, but going further and using calculus. It, it will yield almost all of the same results, and so if you're satisfied with it, good for you. You shouldn't worry about exactly how perfect it is in the mathematical world, if it helps you that much. And to do this, we really need to focus on the old ideas of taking two points and just measuring their slopes, like, like we did here. How can we do that that involves this kind of idea and still take that slope at one point. And for this, I'm, I'm going to do this kind of tricky thing where I want to measure the slope at one point with two different points. How am I going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to see, hey, wait a minute. As these points get closer and closer and closer, they actually get closer and closer to being the same point, right? There's less distance between them, and they get closer and closer to being the exact same point. Those are some of the messiest lines I've ever seen. I'm just going to erase them out of shame and draw some new ones. As our points get closer and closer to the point that we're trying to find the slope at, they get closer and closer to being the same points. So and when we see delta x going to zero, it can't actually really ever be zero because then we're measuring zero over zero with our slope and that's just going to be ambiguous. However, what if we made it so incredibly small that not only is it not being equal to zero, not important to say scientists or people measuring, but that it's so incredibly small that it's not actually even important to mathematicians. That in purity, it is small beyond relationship to the rest of our answer. That it is so perfect, but not quite perfect, that it actually really represents the slope at one point. And to do this, we're going to make this delta x what is called infinitesimal. I'm, I'm going to zoom in on the curve here. Just going to zoom in on a little piece of the curve. We have some piece of our curve here. And this is a ridiculously small piece of the of curve. The idea of an infinitesimal is that, or an infinitesimal distance in this case, is that it can never be detected or discerned in any way, even really mathematically, but it's not zero. So there's a distance, 
but there's no way to know what it is. It's so small. It is infinitely small. Think one over infinity. And we're going to call this new um, infinitesimal. And you know, this is a little bit kind of of a squishy definition that you shouldn't take too seriously. But you can think of it, this is our new term, dx is going to be our infinitesimally small change in x. And we're going to say this is basically the inverse of infinity, which if you take algebra, you've probably seen before, and you always just say, oh, that's zero. But it really isn't zero, really, is it? It's really infinitely small, and you can call that zero in algebra. And similarly here, you can kind of think of it as zero. We take these points, by doing this limit, we're essentially saying, you know, delta x is getting closer and closer to zero, and it never reaches zero. So what is it in infinitesimal distance away from zero? What if we could get infinitely close to zero, then the any errors in our uh, prediction here for the slope are also going to be infinitely small, and so we can ignore them. It's not just a matter of being like, you know, oh, you know, we're, we're measuring on such a large scale that it's not important. Any scale is infinitely large compared to this one. It's not relative. Like, as long as any scale that is not also infinitesimal is infinitely large compared to this one. So it's, it's essentially on a whole nother level that we can't think of it on the same way. And similarly, there's an infinitesimal change in y that corresponds to that infinitesimal change in x, dy and dx. And that dy, just like dx, is infinitesimal and is essentially what we'll be used to using to uh, measure the slope, right? Because dy is just an infinitesimal version of our dx right here and, I mean, of our um, delta y, which, right, delta y over delta x is equal to our slope, right? We just call that m. Similarly, dy is like an infinitesimal change in y, and dx is our infinitesimal change in x. And the idea is we're taking the slope between two points that are infinitely close together, and so they are essentially the same point. They are infinitely close together, and so it doesn't really make sense to think of them as separate points exactly. So you'll be infinitely close to approximating the slope of the curve. You have these two infinitely close points, and it's really just a slope like normal, sort of, where we're just taking those two points and finding, you know, ratios between their changes in the coordinates. But its approximation is infinite, and so you can really be comfortable with that perfectly. And I say that word perfectly with, you know, an odd little hint of something else. Perfectly represent the slope at one point, and that that's really what the limit is saying. Um, I hope that that helped get some kind of idea across about how this, this definition of the slope, and I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this dy dx for this video. I'm going to call that, that's our slope at one point, dy dx is the limit as we get to this infinitesimal difference between the, the point that we want the slope at and some other point that essentially just represent the same point. And, but because they're not exactly the same point, we can measure their slopes and we get this slope here, dy dx. Uh, if you're not satisfied with that, I'm going to have a follow-up video that goes into a little bit more depth, perhaps, and might be more satisfying to those who feel a little bit alienated by this kind of frivolous use of infinity. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.